The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, To you who hear I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you, to the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well, and from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies and do good to them and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. For he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just also your Father is merciful. Stop judging and you will not be judged. Stop condemning and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together shaken down and overflowing will be poured into your lap for the measure with which you measure will in turn be measured out to you the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ morning brothers and sisters in the lord today my sermon will be recorded and edited for um, diffusion because an organization requested for it so for you it will be like a, a repetitious thing because I will repeat my homily on the communion of saints and the importance and power of exorcised salt and exercise water or holy water and other sacramentals as one of our responses to the crisis today. Number one point, where there is sin, there is chaos and sufferings. The result of sin is actually separation from God is chaos or disorder or suffering and eventually eternal death. The world is beset with so many problems, issues that affect man medically, politically, economically, and of course spiritually. All these are effects of man's separation from God. Where there is a disorder in reality, there follows chaos. So the world is in disorder, in chaos. Not only because of war and because of corruption, but because of the concept of many people today. The true order of reality is this, the correct order of things. God first, man second, things last. That's the correct order in terms of priority. And even at the, from time to time, we can sacrifice things 
in order to respect the dignity and promote the right of man. And sometimes we can sacrifice ourselves, even our life, martyrdom, for the glory of God. Things were created for the sake of man and woman, of course, humanity. And humanity was created for the sake of God. Second point, we need to return to God to bring order to our life. Government, science, and technology can only do as much. Let us appreciate God's plan of salvation, His plan for our true happiness. Discern His plan, His will, to know how He wants to run the world. We are not the one running the world. God is running the world. He is the creator. Doing God's will can never harm me. Doing God's will can never harm another. Doing God's will can only bring harmony and order, light and love to help us bring order in our life and our neighbor. It will lead us to integrity and sanctification. It is only in doing the will of God that the order of things is restored. Kung wala sang Diyos, bisan ano mo ka-arrange ang kalibutan, it lacks foundation and it lacks strength and eventually it will give way. It will give up paagi sa kabugat sang sin and corruption. Pero kung may Diyos, may salandigan. That's why I said government, governance, science and technology are very helpful. But they are not absolute. They can only do as much for our progress, for our de de development. Let us also appreciate the work of our leaders and support them in their effort. However, science and government, as I said, can only do as much because they are also limited. They are so limited to address life in all its problems. Life has a bigger and broader scope that science cannot give all the answers to the questions of life itself. It has no total solution. So when the government and science reach their limits, it is time for God to enter and be involved to give life hope and solution and answers to all the questions and resolve any issues in life. Third point, we need to unleash the power which God gave to His church. We need to unleash the power of the church, a God-given power. It is not self-generated by the church, but it is the power of the Holy Spirit given to the church. Power that was used by the saints long before they have been in, they, when they have encountered so many worst and grave impossible situations. They unleashed the power of the Catholic Church that resolved the problems in their lifetime. So in this great moment of the world in trouble, we need to use all means perfected by the Catholic Church and tried by the saints who fought bravely to be the heroes of God to save and sanctify the world. How? By invoking the powerful intercession of the communion of the saints. Hindi natin inimasarangan kung aton lang prayers. We have the communion of saints. Nalipat kita sa ila. Silang maka-intercede sa aton. Communion of saints means those in heaven already, triumphant church, admitted to God's heavenly light, Mother Mary, all the saints and angels, we need their powers, we need their intercession. Pero ginahaboy lang sang iban, nag totally on science and organization, human efforts, 
and human strength. Pero may mga problema nga hindi masarangan sa ni. We need to borrow their strength, so to say. We have also church suffering in purgatory. That's why we need to pray for the souls in purgatory. We need them. They need us. Communion of saints. We need each other. We help each other. We pray for each other. We need to invoke them. And of course, church militant, the faithful, or the holy souls on earth. We need each other. We pray for each other. We help each other. So we invoke the power of the total church, of the whole church, not only the church living in this world, but the church of the souls departed, soul departed, departed souls in purgatory and those who are in heaven. Second, receive faithfully the sacraments and use devotedly the sacramentals. For example, medals, holy water, blessed salt, devotions, and holy rosary. I would like to read to you the text of the exorcism of salt and exorcism of water and its blessing. It's a little, little, little bit long, but worth appreciating and no, no, worth knowing. It says here, O salt, creature of God, I exorcise you by the living God by the true God, by the holy God, by the God who ordered you to be poured into the water by Elisha the prophet, so that its life-giving powers might be restored. I exorcise you so that you may become a means of salvation for believers, that you may bring health of soul and body to all who make use of you, and that you may put to flight and drive away from the, their homes where you are sprinkled every apparition villainy, turn of devilish deceit, and every unclean spirit adjured by him who will come to judge the living and the dead and the world by fire. And the priest will continue, Almighty addressing God, Almighty and everlasting God, we humbly implore you in your immeasurable kindness and love to bless this soul which you created and gave to the use of mankind so that it may become a source of health for the minds and bodies of all who make use of it. May it rid whatever it touches or sprinkles of all uncleanness and protect it from every assault of evil and uh, evil spirits. Through Christ our Lord. Then, the exorcism of the holy of the water. It says here, O water, creature of God, I exorcise you in the name of God, the Father Almighty, in the name of Jesus Christ, His Son, our Lord, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. I exorcise you so that you may put to flight all the powers of the enemy and be able to root out and supplant that enemy with his apostate angels through the power of our Lord Jesus Christ who will come to judge the living and the dead and the world by fire. And then the priest will address God in his prayer. O oh God, for the salvation of mankind, you built your greatest mysteries on this substance, water. In your kindness, hear our prayers and pour down the power of your blessing into this element made ready for many kinds of purifications. May this, your creature water, become an agent of divine grace in the service of your mysteries to drive away evil spirits and dispel sickness so that everything in the homes and the buildings of the faithful that is sprinkled with this holy water may be rid of all uncleanness and freed from every harm. Let no breath of infection and no disease-bearing air remain in their homes. May the wiles of the lurking enemy prove of no avail. Let whatever might menace the safety and peace of those who live there be put to flight by the sprinkling of this water so that the health obtained by calling upon your holy name be made secure against all attack through Christ our Lord. These prayers had been used by the church for hundreds of years. And in our generation, we forgot about it. 
That's why we need to recover the power of this prayer and the power of the sacramentals. Sometimes we have recourse to other things, not the sacramentals of the church, but things of other religions. We are Catholics. We have our own sacramentals. Make use of them for your protection and as a means of your holiness. What now? Some pointers. What are we going to do now? Go to your priest and ask him to bless your sacramentals. It is our duty as priests to bless and assist the faithful in their spiritual need. Bring home the salt and holy water. Sprinkle around your rooms, in your house, etc. While praying either the Holy Rosary or the Litany of the Saints or continuously the Our Father, the Hail Mary, and the Glory Be until finished. Teach your children the value and the power of the sacraments and the sacramentals. Share the grace of sacramentals to others. It is like discovering a cure to a certain ailment. If you are the one who discovered it, won't you share it to others for their cure too? So also with the power of the sacramentals, we should propagate it and invite people to use it. Support religious associations or groups like Marian groups in their initiatives, prayer and devotionals. Encourage them and commend their efforts. Do not belittle them. Oh, your prayer is obsolete. It's useless. It's backward. No. Science has already failed to a certain extent. We need to di discover, rediscover the power of faith. Go to confession and reconcile or reconnect to God. Some priests who are open are open to hear confession in accordance with our health and safety protocols. Stay safe, follow protocol, be healthy, find a balance between spiritual health and economic needs. And lastly, but more importantly, equally important, don't forget to help the poor and do the works of mercy, corporal and spiritual. Lastly, remember this, in times of hopelessness, our ultimate hope rests in the power and the goodness of God. The problem is not in God because He is always there and ready to help us. The problem, I guess, is in us, on our part, on our side, because humanity has closed its door on God. Let's open our life to Him. Do not be afraid to welcome God into your life. Permit Him to guide us with the Blessed Mother as our advocate, His Mother whom He fully trusted with His life from womb to tomb was given to us by Jesus to be our mother too, as she can take care of us as she did to Jesus in His lifetime. So we need to act like a church. We need to employ the ecclesial means. We need to do our part. Everybody has his part. The government, science, doctors, teachers, church. We are the church and we need to, have to do our part. And primarily, but not exclusively, our part is always spiritual. It's always spiritual. Even it's material, helping the poor, it's always for the spiritual purpose, for the holiness of the people, and for the salvation of souls. That's why we need to rediscover this power. The communion of saints, we invoke them. We use the sacrament and sacramentals. We spread the gospel. May God bless you. Please all stand. Incline your merciful ear to our prayers we ask, O Lord, and listen in kindness to the supplications of those who call upon you. 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen.